On the night between the 4th and the 5th of December 1957, Miles Davis recorded what stands as the definitive example of film noir music. I'm talking about Generique, a song recorded for the soundtrack of Ashen Sur Perlesha Ford. But the whole soundtrack is a killer. In this video, we're going to talk about how Miles Davis ended up recording a film soundtrack, about the behind the scenes story of how that music was recorded, and about why I think Generic is the point of reference for noir jazz and noir soundtracks. Hello, Topatters! This is Simon Mas, your friend with a master degree in music composition, a lot of music stories to tell and an emergency location to do it. 1957 was quite a year for Miles Davis. In March, his first great quintet had come to an end, with the sucking of John Coltrane and Philly Joe Jones. Their heroin and alcohol abuses were compromising the band's music on the stage. In May, Davis recorded Miles Ahead, one of the landmarks in his discography. Meanwhile, Miles was gigging at the Café Bohemia in New York. His new band had Sonny Rollins on sax and Art Taylor on drums, but that band too broke into pieces during the summer. Davis decided to wait. He had this idea of expanding the group from a quintet to a sextet with two saxophone players, Cannonball Adderley and John Coltrane, but things needed to mature. By the end of November, Miles was free from any contractual obligation. He flew to Paris, France. It was a city dear to him and to other American musicians. Miles himself had visited several times already. The city had a growing hunger for cutting-edge jazz and a host of black American musicians were performing in the city's clubs. They could enjoy the luxury of living as normal citizens, relatively free from discrimination, unlike what happened at home. Davis was the king in Paris and in selected European cities with a made-up band featuring three French musicians, Barney Willen on sax, René Ertiger on piano and Pierre Michelot on bass, and American expat Kenny Clark on drums. In fact, tour promoter Marcel Romano had enlisted Miles to take part in a documentary about jazz without even telling him, and luckily so because the project had fallen apart before Miles even reached Paris. And yet. It was through this botched documentary that Miles Davis came to record the soundtrack for Ash and Sore for Le Chafaud. How? Well, put a like to this video if you don't know already, and I'll tell you straight away. You see, Romano had talked about the jazz documentary to a film technician, Jean-Claude Rapineau. Rapineau was also the assistant to director Louis Mal. Mal had just completed his first feature film, Ashen Sor pour Le Chafaud, and he needed music for the soundtrack. A jazz enthusiast who loved Davis, Rapineau had an idea. Wouldn't it be fantastic if you could get Miles involved with the film? Rapineau went talking to Mal about it. Romano was to probe Davis's interest in the matter. Mal was an easy win. He immediately agreed. In fact, Mal made sure a common friend, singer Juliette Greco, approached Miles about the matter. But Davis didn't need that much convincing either. He had never composed or recorded a film soundtrack before. He was thrilled by the chance. A private screening of the film also confirmed that he liked what Mal had produced. But Miles knew the project could have hidden challenges. Moreover, the tour obligations didn't leave a lot of time for the process. In all probability, Miles also knew that the stakes went beyond a simple soundtrack. If he delivered, his star would have shown brightest even in the States. But if he failed... 
Knowing a bit about Miles Davis though, he wasn't one that could contemplate failure. In fact, he quickly found an easy solution to sort out all the challenges he was facing. He never composed a score? Fine, he would have improvised one. After all, he was improvising music every night in front of hundreds of people raptured by his inventions. There was no time for prolonged studio sessions? Alright then, he and his band would have wrapped everything up in one night. A studio was booked for a date on the evening of the 4th of December. In the meantime, Romano delivered the piano in Davis's hotel room. In a 1988 interview, Romano said that the trumpeter looked very relaxed and casual about the whole thing, but he could tell Davis was thinking and working hard on the assignment when he would visit him in his room. Davis reflected on the plot, on the characters and on the type of music the film needed. Whatever the case, at 10 pm on that Wednesday, 4th of December 1957, Miles Davis entered the Le Post Parisien studios. With him, Kenny Clark, Pierre Michelot, René Ortegier and Barney Whelan, his Parisian band. Davis felt they had enough hours of playing together to stand to the challenge. He had one piece worked out to some detail, sur l'autoroute. Then he had ideas and sketches. Davis knew Louis Mal had prepared loops of films showing the scenes that were to be the focus of the music. That meant all the band had to do was react to the images. The other musicians had learned about the project only a couple of days before and they had never watched the film, but the relaxed atmosphere seemed to show Miles' intuition was correct. After a round of drinks, Davis gave everyone a few sketchy instructions and then off they went. The recording sessions went on for roughly four hours. The musicians had lived as the scene went on looping in front of their eyes, inspired by the place they were in. The dark, gloomy rooms, the late hour, the solitude of the old building where the studio was, they all played a part. The music had an ethereal and forlorn feel to it, one that went well with the character of the film. The rest of the work then was relatively easy. Ten songs were cut from all the recorded material. After some mixing and the addition of a good amount of reverb, everyone walked home at 5 am, seven hours after the session had begun. Voila, the soundtrack was done and history was made, just like that. And just like that, you can help me produce more free, great content for everyone. Put a like to this video so that more people will watch it. Tell me if you enjoyed it or not and why so that I can improve. And consider subscribing to my channel. With every subscription, I get closer to the time when I will be able to pay someone to help edit the videos. The immediate perk for you, more videos to watch, and better visuals. Come on, it will only take you one minute. Anyhow, back to the topic of the day. I hate the extreme sensationalism that often colors popular tales from music history, so perhaps I have underplayed the greatness of what happened that night. Make no mistake, what Davis and company achieved with the soundtrack of Ash and Sor for Leisha Ford was quite something. If you watch the film, you'll hear music that supports the scenes, propels the action and helps the viewers immerse themselves in the atmosphere of the film. That's what the best soundtracks do, right? Notice the thematic unity of the music. Hear how the reverb adds depth and distance to the music, allowing the characters space to voice their thoughts. Appreciate that a soundtrack like this still offers a wide enough palette of colors to support different moments of the film. This is a great achievement for people who had never worked on film music, never composed the score and for the most part hadn't watched the film at all. But that's not all. 
at least some of the original 10 tracks could figure on any album standing on their own merits. That's not something that happens in every film soundtrack, not even in the best ones. I was raving about Jean-Ric, but L'Assassinat de Carala could serve as a nice prelude to a longer piece. Sur Lauterut might have ended up on a regular Miles Davis album of the era. Florence sur le Champs-Élysées is a vignette that could be a standard. There's a lot of Miles Davis in the music, but the supporting cast is doing a great job too. Just listen and tell me whether or not I'm making too much of the music. Having said that, I can't help feeling that comments like Wow, Miles Davis improvised the film soundtrack in a few hours are just a backhand compliment to the man. I can excuse the enthusiasm from fans not versed in jazz, but not from fellow musicologists or music professionals. They should know we are talking about an incredibly talented jazz musician that had already made history by his early 30s. This is not a kid on a YouTube challenge. I picked up a trumpet for the first time and here's what happened after a few hours. Please, stop the drama. It takes away from the greatness of this band of musicians and their achievement. Before wrapping things up, I still owe you an explanation on why I think Generic is the quintessential film noir track. First, Miles' trumpet sound. Mysterious, muted, dreamlike, his lines raise in a spire that seems to match the noir omnipresent cigarette smoke. Watch any noir film, old or new, and you'll get that sound translated onto a film. Second, the band's playing. Desolate, brooming, momentous and yet almost hopeful at times. It perfectly reflects the world of film noir. A world where survival is hard and life almost drags on to its ordinary, unhappy, abrupt end. But with dignity and a sense of hoping against hope that is almost touching. I can't think of any other piece of music, jazz or otherwise, that achieves so much so quickly. But there's more. Generic anticipates Davis's experiments with modal harmony and it immediately imposes its presence to you. You can't help to listen to it as soon as you hear it. Listen to it then. The link to the whole original soundtrack is in the description. Better yet, dig out a copy of Ashen Sur pour les Chaffaud and hear the music in context. This, my dear top patters, was Simon Mas. See you soon for more music related content. For the moment, stay cool and keep your top hat on. Bye! Simon Mas, music you love!